Hey everyone, welcome to the first AZ Holistic live stream CBD educational series. We decided we wanted to put this together to help people understand a little bit more detail about CBD or cannabidiol so that they can get all the information that they need. We've been studying this molecule now for about four and a half years, so we have a pretty good handle on how the molecule works. We stay up on new trends, um, new lectures, and new information being published by the medical institutions and by a lot of the biologists that have been exploring this molecule for quite some time. So we wanted to start the series, and we thought it'd be fun to stream it live so that everyone can watch and ask questions, and we can start giving direct feedback to people um, for their questions and start sharing this information as best we can. If we don't know the answer to something, We'll find out and we'll share it in next week's stream. So today we're gonna to start with the basics. Each week or every other week as we do these live streams, we're gonna start talking about uh, a little bit more detailed biology. But the first couple of weeks, we're gonna start with the basics. There's still a lot of people out there that don't know a lot about CBD. We get people that come in the store every day and say, I need CBD for pain. Or what's the best CBD for anxiety? And we look at each other and say, there is no specific CBD for pain or anxiety. It does it all. CBD is a naturally occurring molecule, okay, naturally occurring in hemp and cannabis, but it's also present in other plant species as well. We'll save that for another live stream for you. But in any event, this molecule belongs within the human body because it influences something called the endocannabinoid system. Uh, much of this information you can find on some of our educational videos on the website, but for people streaming and watching it live tonight, we wanted to do a quick overview. Okay? The molecule, once in the body, starts to make modulatory adjustments in the immune system. What's amazing about the product is we see all sorts of people, tall, skinny, heavy set, people from all walks of life are getting benefits from the material but a lot of people don't know where to start. Okay, so today we're gonna to start with dosing, which is pretty important to know about. First thing we're gonna to touch on regarding dosing is that not all CBD is equal. Okay, we've tested hundreds of different CBD products here at the store. People will bring something in. This isn't working for me. Why isn't this CBD working? My friend's CBD is working for him, and it really isn't necessarily always equal. Okay, you wanna be buying from a reputable, retailer, you want to make sure that there's a certificate of analysis showing exactly what's in the bottle and what the potency of CBD is in the bottle. So let's start. Um, today we've got a couple of special guests we're going to introduce after the break. Um, we've got Chelsea coming in with Pendleton, and Chelsea's pretty awesome, but wait till you meet Pendleton. I think you're all going to be pretty excited when you meet Pendleton today after the break. So stick around after that, okay? Don't forget to subscribe or share this if you find the information valuable with someone that you think it may help, all right? So first thing we're gonna do is talk about dosing. So people come into our store. In fact, a couple of people came in just today and said, you know, uh, I followed the instructions that you told me. I took half a dropper twice a day and I'm feeling something. It's feeling a little better. My pain's gone down a little bit, but why isn't my pain gone? And so the first question we ask is, did you follow the instructions on the dose card? We give everyone a dose card that comes into the store with very specific instructions, whether or not you're taking it topically or inhaling it, vaporizing the medicine, direct delivery to the brain, or you're taking a tincture, which tends to be the most common method of ingestion. And then we have a little chart here, which is very important to note, how many milligrams you're getting per dropper based on the potency of what's in the bottle. So we had a client in today and this woman said, my I feel a lot better. My pain's gone from a six to about a four, but why isn't it gone? And we asked, did you titrate? We probably wanna lock that door. Yep, <clears throat> excuse us, someone just tried to walk in the store, even though we've been closed for 45 minutes. Anyway, we're live streaming, so we get that. So a woman came in today and said, uh, my pain went from a six to about a four. Why isn't my pain gone? And we asked her, did you titrate? And she said, I don't know what you mean by titrate. Well, everyone that comes in the store who gets the dose card, we make sure that they understand, stick with a specific dose for three to five days at that dosage, okay? Allowing your body to start pooling up CBD. And at some point, your body will start to utilize it, okay? You'll start to feel the benefits, whether it's anxiety or pain or inflammation, inflammatory processes in the body. 
And so ultimately, she said, no, I read the card, or I remember you circled. I think I remember she said, you circled, take twice a day, half a dropper. And that's exactly what I did. And we said, well, yeah, but the next step is to increase your dose every three to five days so that you can begin to have it build up in the bloodstream. And that's very important because we want to start to influence those receptors at the right dose for each person's metabolism, right? CBD works on each person's metabolism uniquely to their metabolism. We've seen people come in the store, four foot two, 80 pounds. They need 60 to 70 milligrams a day. And then we've seen men come in the store, six foot eight, 350 pound guy, and 10 milligrams gets rid of his pain or reduces his pain dramatically. How do you explain that other than it's metabolism based and CBD is gonna influence those pain receptors in everybody differently. Therefore, you must follow the instructions on the dose card and slowly increase your dosage, very slowly, every three to five days until you start to feel the change. Now, why, people ask, three to five days? Um, we've learned over the years that it's enough time to allow the body to start utilizing the molecule. And if your body's either going to absorb it and stay deficient in the molecule, meaning your body's just gobbling it up and using it, you're probably not going to feel a lot of modulatory benefits. But if your body is starting to store the molecule in your cells and fatty lipids, now you start to get more of a consistent pain relief or anxiety or inflammatory relief. So the key is start low. We start everyone here at the store between 5 and 10 milligrams. Now you may not feel anything at 5 or 10 milligrams. Don't think that the CBD is not working. It's just not enough strength for your body. And again, height and weight and age means nothing when it comes to CBD. Again, everyone's body is unique. Also, there's a whole bunch of other factors involved, right? We've got hydration. How hydrated are you? Or how dehydrated are you? And here in Arizona, where it's starting to get really hot, your body's gobbling up, right, the water. It's gobbling up. Um, it's becoming dehydrated very rapidly. So we have to stay hydrated with good, clean water. We're going to do some future streams on different qualities of bottled water too, which will be interesting for some people. Not all bottled water is equal as well. So we want the molecule to begin to build up, okay? And at that time, as we titrate and slowly increase, we should start to see changes occur within the body, right? So if we take too much too fast, for example, we had a gentleman come in a couple days ago who had a pinched nerve in his neck. He was saying, I just need to get out of pain now as fast as possible. Should I just get that 2,000 milligram bottle and take a full dropper? We say, well, you can do that if you want, but be prepared that you might experience some dysbiosis. Remember, CBD in the bloodstream is going to stimulate the glutamate receptors on the vagus nerve, which goes from the base of the skull down the spinal column into the lower intestines. And that vagus nerve controls a whole host of things in the body, resting heart rate, respiration, glucose levels, chemical balance, as well as how our body digests foods. That's the reason why CBD helps to quell nausea for a lot of people because it's stimulating the vagus nerve, which is stimulating the gastrointestinal region, which is in fact reducing nausea for people who may be allergic to MSG or perhaps have something going on in the stomach. So the ultimate goal here is to always start low between five and 10 milligrams and slowly increase your dose so that you're not taking too much CBD too quickly. Another point is that why would you take 50 milligrams of CBD if your body only needs 20? Why would you spend an extra $100 a month if you don't have to? So there's a lot of reasons why we recommend starting low, being cautious with your dose, and if you're taking it for sleep and you just want to take it for sleep alone, you're just dosing before bed. Same holds true. Three to five days at that dosage is enough for it to potentially start building up. If it doesn't, your sleep won't become uh, better. You won't sleep more restful or longer until you increase that dosage just enough to start stimulating those receptors. So that's the ultimate goal when we talk about CBD and dosage. Um, it's also really important to note, someone will come in the store and say, but my friend took a dropper of his bottle. Why isn't that working for me? And we'll say, well, What's the dosage that he took? How many, uh, what's the potency? How many milligrams are in the whole bottle? And he says, I don't know. He had a bottle and I have a bottle. Well, 
the dosage or the potency on the bottle is also really important to note. Does he have a 100 milligram bottle? If that's the case, it's only 3.3 milligrams per full dropper. Does he have a 3,000 milligram bottle? A full dropper is 100 milligrams. So the potency and the dosage within the bottle and the dropper is really important to note and that's why the testing is vital and important and that's why we test all of our products. So if you leave our store with a 300 milligram bottle of CBD, you know you're getting 10 milligrams per dropper. Okay? So what I want to do now is I want to take a very quick break and then we're going to bring in our special, special guests. We've got Chelsea coming in and the real special guest, which I think you guys are really going to be uh, excited to see, Pendleton. So we'll be back shortly. We look forward to seeing you back here shortly in a couple minutes. Welcome to AZ Holistic, Arizona's CBD source for education, guidance, and high quality CBD and plant-based products. So what is CBD? CBD is an acronym. CBD stands for cannabidiol, and it's a naturally occurring cannabinoid that's found in many plant species, including cannabis, which a lot of people know about. It's also found in hemp at a larger dosage there's more CBD in hemp than there is in cannabis. So it's a naturally occurring plant molecule that helps to balance the body. At AZ Holistic, we don't just sell CBD. We help educate people on how it works in the body. able to start the system is always working and when you interrupt that with materials that don't belong in the body you're going to get symptoms so when we put cannabinoids in the body it's going to regulate and balance just about every function of the human body including in the body right the peripheral and the central nervous system our compassionate and knowledgeable staff are dedicated to helping people live happier and healthier while vastly improving their quality of life We've seen a lot of people with different forms of dementia, whether it's Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, and they come in the store trembling and shaking because that region of the brain is being disrupted. And then they get on CBD, and within three, six, eight weeks, they come back in and they hold their hand out like this. And I'm sorry, but we all start crying because it's, it's pretty incredibly moving when you see someone's life change. Hey, welcome back, guys. So John Callahan here with AZ Holistic, CBD live stream. Um, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, I want to introduce Chelsea, who actually has become, started with a client of ours, and now she works at the store. And I'll tell you what, she's phenomenal. If any people out there are watching or have had the ability to have her in front of them at the store, they're in for a treat. She's amazing. She's learning so rapidly. And uh, I know I'm putting you on the spot, Thank you. but she really is. She's exceptional. We love having her here, and she's amazing with the customers, and the customers actually call and ask for her now. So um, she's wonderful to have in the store, very educated, and she has her own personal story about CBD that she wants to share. Um, if other people are listening, they can share it. Um, don't forget, um, you can share this with other people so they can get the benefit of learning, especially with regard to Chelsea's condition. A lot of people in six million America have psoriasis. Chelsea wants to talk a little bit about how it's helped her condition. And then we're going to introduce Pendleton. So don't go away. Pendleton, you're not going to believe Pendleton's so cool. All right. So bear with us. Yep. Press and hold it. Press and hold it down. Sorry, folks, quick technical difficulty. We didn't turn Chelsea's mic. <laughs> How are we now? now? We good? 
All right, yeah. perfect. Okay, so um, I came in as a customer first, yep. and what drove me to AZ Holistic CBD Studio uh, was I was suffering a pretty severe case of psoriasis. Um, it initially began just around my mouth. It formed down my neck, across my entire chest, and then from my wrists all the way to the bends in my elbows. And this was highly inflamed, bright pink, itching, um, flaking. It was just a nightmare to deal with. Mm -hmm. And I tried everything, um, all different kinds of skin creams, whatever was available on the market, and to no avail, okay. nothing was working. Okay. Um, I also came in here because I was experiencing quite a bit of anxiety. I had just recently moved from a different state to Arizona and found some struggle with adapting to this new environment. Um, so what that means is I was waking up each day having almost two hour long panic attacks. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It was becoming quite debilitating after a while there. Mm -hmm. I just started self-medicating any way I could, mm -hmm. and that just wasn't the right way uh, for me. So I was curious about CBD as I had worked in the cannabis industry prior. That's right. You told in your interview you talked about <laughs> yeah. working at the dispensary in Oregon. Right. right. And that's right. most this flower related products. Um, so I wasn't too educated on CBD, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But I came in, it was worth a shot, I had a great conversation with you, um, and I began my dose, low dose as we talked about, yep. between five to 10 milligrams. And I stayed, I maintained that dose for three days. Okay. By that third morning, I had woken up, as far as anxiety is concerned, mm -hmm. it was the first morning that I could actually sit, focus, have thoughts that would normally trigger these panic attacks, uh -huh. but without that fight or flight sensation. So that's it. a good example of the three days was just enough time for it to start building up for you for my body at that dose. At that yeah. dose yeah, I don't think you ever shared that with me before, but that's oh. great. That's a good <laughs> yeah, example of why we, why we tell everyone yeah. that. Yep. Patience, right. <laughs> consistency as well. Um, and then as far as my psoriasis goes, uh, usually after you, you shower each morning, you have to apply a vigorous amount or vigorously quite a bit of lotion to these areas. And then repeat that process throughout the day. Mm -hmm. That skin is just so dry. Right. Um, by day three, I noticed that when I got out of the shower, I didn't actually need to apply lotion to these patches anymore. Okay. My skin seemed to be relatively smooth. There was minimal flaking. Wow. I know it sounds gross. But, um, <laughs> and so I, by day three, decided that maybe I should up my dose a little bit uh -huh. as I found that throughout the day, as far as anxiety was concerned, I was still experiencing these peaks and valleys. Okay. So after a few more tries, a few weeks of slowly and steadily titrating up, yep. uh, my skin condition really, really cleared itself up. That's awesome. Pretty much the rashes were just about gone by the end of that first week at a low dose as well. Excellent. I currently find myself between 30 to 40 milligrams a day, and that keeps my psoriasis at bay, and it keeps my anxiety totally level. Awesome. Yeah. Wonderful. All right, so what we want to do now, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. That's a wonderful <laughs> story. I love it. Um, we want to introduce Pendleton. Pendleton is a pet of Chelsea and her boyfriend, Nikki. <laughs> and we want to talk briefly about pet CBD because this is a big topic right now. This is Pendleton, guys. Pendleton rocks. So Chelsea and Mickey have two ferrets. This is Pendleton, one of two. And Chelsea also wants to share something a little bit quickly about anxiety and depression in animals. Uh, anyone that's a pet lover knows that they experience the same type of emotional bond with their owners as we experience with them. They also know that they are susceptible to all the things that we're susceptible to, toxins in the food, toxins in the environment, stress and anxiety. So Chelsea wants to share a little bit about what occurred when her and Mickey had moved from Oregon and had come here to Arizona. And I'm just going to turn it over to her so she can share her story on that. I think it's a pretty cool story. I think you're going to dig it. Thank you, John. Awesome. So Pendleton, that's this little guy here. He is a two-year-old ferret, um, originally from Oregon. And when we moved here, we drove. And he did a really good job 
the first few weeks of his new environment, he was still pretty active. He was still pretty excited. Um, he's usually really engaging with us because uh -huh. he um, just really playful, really curious uh -huh. uh, about what's going on in <laughs> life. <laughs> and then uh, I noticed over some time, like once he got used to his current environment, his behavior really started to change. He was very lethargic. He was mm -hmm. sleeping all the time. Um, he was not excitable at all. I would he wants to get into that. TV, <laughs> he sure he? does already. <laughs> yeah, he knows what it is. Um, so it, it was pretty pretty upsetting to see because I know him pretty well. He's very active, very um, loves to wrestle and play, but none of that. I, I couldn't elicit any of that type of attitude out of him. Huh. Um, and he gained a lot of weight. He was just what I do when I'm depressed. I <laughs> eat a lot, and that's what he was doing, too. Right, right. Um, Interesting. Yeah, so I felt so much better when I was taking CBD, and I did a little research to make sure that ferrets can consume hemp seed oil, mm -hmm. and uh, it turns out that they can in low doses. So I thought, if this is working so well for me, right. what's the harm, really, in giving it to my little guy here? Um, and so I began a low dose regimen with him and within days he was back to his usual self. Awesome. He was so, so much fun again, That's so great. lively. That's great. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, so all pets can respond from CBD, especially mammals. We now know through studies that not only mammals that bear milk, right, have the same receptors that us humans have, because we're mammals, um, but invertebrates also have various receptors that can respond from different types of cannabinoids. I mean, it's a plant, and plants are put on the earth for us, for all species, to consume and to utilize for health. So uh, we want to talk briefly in getting ready to close here today. And we're going to open it up for questions. So anyone that's watching can ask questions. Lonnie, our tech guy here, is going to make sure that we get um, the questions so we can answer them for you live. Um, but one of the things we want to um, finish with here on this segment is that there is no such thing as pet CBD. Uh, because CBD is becoming so popular and because so many people are getting results from it, it's now following the greed trend in America where it's now capitalistic and everyone wants to get in the business and everyone wants to make it and everyone wants to sell it. There's people making it in their house, in their kitchen, in their garage. There's people selling it at farmers markets on the side of the road up in North Scottsdale. There's a guy selling it out of a van. You have no idea what's in it. And so we like to make sure that it's made in a laboratory with sanitary conditions and specifically an ISO certified laboratory. Someone that has dust control, temp control. I mean, this is medication that you're putting in your body. You don't just want to haphazardly just put stuff in your body that may not be high quality or at the right potency. So when it comes to pet CBD, if you go to your vet and your dog or cat has a significant problem and they're putting them on some kind of anti-anxiety, anti-inflammatory medications, a lot of people coming in the store saying, I've heard about CBD, I want to try it for my dog or my cat or even my horse. So they have a specific pet CBD that's been formulated specifically for pets. Nothing could be further from the truth. The fact is that the molecule that we said earlier in today's segment, CBD cannabidiol is one molecule that stimulates receptors in the body. And therefore, that's all you need is CBD. It doesn't have to have a bacon flavoring. It doesn't have to have salmon flavoring. It doesn't have to be specifically formulated in a certain way to be given to a cat or a dog. That's a gimmick to part ways with you and your money. All you need is the same CBD that you take, share it with your animal, and uh, again, start low with the dosage as you heard Chelsea describe, especially if you have a small uh, animal. Um, animals can't talk to us, obviously, so they can't say, I feel great. You have to watch behavior, so always start very low with the animal. Um, and if you start to see drowsiness or sleepiness, back off on the dose. That's one of the triggers that we see. Too much CBD, we can get loose stools, some people, not everyone, um, or we can get sleepy or drowsy, all right? So use it with caution. If you have any unwanted signs or symptoms like a rash, we had one person come in literally in the last six months that said, I broke out from a rash from CBD. And we said, what product did you buy? And I'm not going to name the brand that we sell. It's a quality brand. But there was an, an herb in the product called uh, ashwagandha and rhodelia. And those two herbs are very good for anxiety. It's a natural herb. Well, she had a reaction to the ashwagandha, not to the CBD. So that's why we typically recommend unflavored, nothing that's been mixed with anything, so that we don't have any unwanted uh, side effects from the CBD or the herb mixing with something else in your bloodstream, okay? So 
Chelsea's going to dose a little Pendleton. ferret for us. Pendleton. Yeah, he loves and the CBD. Remember, you don't have to buy special CBD. Start low with the dose, even for your animals. And we're going to come back in a couple minutes after Chelsea doses Pendleton. Um, Pendleton's going to love it. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. All right, Pen Pen. So I have a bottle here. Um, again, we're talking very low dose. I give him about an eighth of a dropper. And that is a 100 milligram bottle? This is 100 so milligrams. the lowest we sell, 100 milligrams, mm -hmm. yep. And he really, really loves the taste of it. <laughs> and I, this is how I give it to him. I just straight down the hatch. That's awesome. Look at him. Yep. And then usually I give it to his sister as well. Okay. Um, and when they, I let them lick the whole, they love it. That's awesome. Um, once they're done, once she gets hers too, they begin to lick each other's mouths and oh, like kiss each other. We need to get that on film at some point. <laughs> yeah, we will. For we got to sure. bring them back. We got to bring sure. both the ferrets back Good so we can boy, watch them make out live on stream. Yeah, did you get your CBD? Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, yeah. Chelsea. Thank you, Thanks John. for watching, guys. Remember, share, subscribe, and we're going to be right back and answer your questions if you have any. So feel free to uh, chat some questions for us and we'll try to answer them for you. Thanks so much, guys. <laughs> Welcome to AZ Holistic, Arizona's CBD source for education, guidance, and high-quality CBD and plant-based products. So, what is CBD? CBD is an acronym. CBD stands for cannabidiol, and it's a naturally occurring cannabinoid that's found in many plant species, including cannabis, which a lot of people know about. It's also found in hemp at a larger dosage there's more CBD in hemp than there is in cannabis. So it's a naturally occurring plant molecule that helps to balance the body. At AZ Holistic, we don't just sell CBD. We help educate people on how it works in the body. Our number one goal here at the store is to educate people to take responsibility for themselves and be able to start eating more healthy and understand different toxins in food. Our body is divinely inspired to heal. The immune system is always working. And when you interrupt that with materials that don't belong in the body, you're gonna get symptoms. So when we put cannabinoids in the body, it's going to regulate and balance just about every function of the human body, including in the body, right, the peripheral and the central nervous system. Our compassionate and knowledgeable staff are dedicated to helping people live happier and healthier while vastly improving their quality of life. We've seen a lot of people with different forms of dementia, whether it's Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, and they come in the store trembling and shaking because that region of the brain is being disrupted. And then they get on CBD, and within three, six, eight weeks, they come back in and they hold their hand out like this. And I'm sorry, but we all start crying because it's, it's pretty incredibly moving when you see someone's life change. Hey guys, welcome back. 
John here with AZ Holistic on the CBD live stream. We did have a couple questions that came in tonight, so we want to get to those. Lonnie was going to share that with me. What was the first one, Lonnie? Uh, we had Aaron through the chat room asked. Aaron is asking a question. Is the lotion good for eczema? Is CBD lotion good for eczema? Yes, so there's different types of emollients in the CBD lotions that we sell. We have a whole host of them to choose from. Some are lotions, so more kind of like a Jergens lotion. Um, we don't put any emulsifiers or stabilizers or uh, any artificial ingredients in our topicals or pretty much any of our products for that matter. But uh, it's important to note that a lot of topicals that you buy, even with CBD topicals, will have um, all sorts of uh, long words that you can't describe. And those are um, stabilizers and emulsifiers. So therefore, it's going to stay very stable in any environment, including heat or cold. And so our pain creams and lotions actually change a little bit with the barometer, with the weather. We have a pain cream that has a lot of menthol in it, and when it gets warm, it kind of melts like an oil, and we refer to it as a body butter. And so therefore, the different types of emollients are going to do different things, obviously, to the skin, but they all have CBD in them. So the different emollients are going to be personal preference. If you want a salve, kind of like Vaseline, um, goes on smooth, good for using it for massage. Uh, many of them have lemongrass or lavender or camphor or arnica oil. These are all naturally anti-inflammatory emollients that help to reduce inflammation along with the CBD penetrating the dermis of the skin. It does soak into the bloodstream. So keep in mind, when you put CBD on your skin, okay, and many things, including sunscreens, um, some of those chemicals can soak through, okay, and actually get into the bloodstream and flow throughout the, the bloodstream of the body, which means it's getting in your brain, it's getting everywhere. So to answer your question, Aaron, I wanted to do kind of a brief recap on the different types of emollients, but um, different CBD topicals, we have seen people get amazing results from eczema and psoriasis. So the question for me would be to the customer, because we like to ask a lot of questions, what size is the area? Is it a little area? Psoriasis tends to be on the elbow, the back of the neck, smaller areas typically. Not for everyone. In Chelsea's case, she had it quite all over her body. But for people that have a small area, we will recommend you don't have to buy a topical. If you're already taking CBD as an oil, you can use the same CBD oil on a small region, like for eczema or psoriasis. If it's a large area, you probably want to get a jar of a topical and use it right on the region. So the answer is yes. We've seen people with eczema, psoriasis, all sorts of different skin conditions, hives. We had a gentleman that came in the store about six or seven months ago, and he had rashes all over his arms and legs. He had already been to Mayo Clinic for six months. They could not figure it out. Some type of the systemic toxin has gotten into his body, created some kind of autoimmune, and he was just breaking out constantly on his arms and on his legs. So what we did is we told him, we want you to take the CBD systemically, put it in the body, right, an oil, and let it work from within the body. And we told him, take the same product and put a few drops on your finger and rub it on your arm. Rub it on the right arm, don't put it on the left arm. So now we're taking the CBD orally to get it into the body so it can work throughout the autonomic system. And we wanted him to do a test and take some of the oil and put it on his arm only to see what would happen between the right and left arm. He came back a week later and he said, this arm, it's completely gone. I still have a little bit left on my, on my, on my legs and just a little bit left on this arm. Which again, this empirical data goes to show that the arm that he took it, obviously took it internally, and the arm that he put it on topically got more relief than the other area where it was working systemically from within. So the age of the child is really up to the parent to determine whether or not they're comfortable giving their child CBD, because some parents are not. Just remember, it's part of the immune system. And a lot of people don't know this, but we tell everyone that comes in the store, especially women, when a woman becomes pregnant and the breast milk comes into the breasts, and the child consumes the breast milk, there's cannabinoids in breast milk. So therefore, your body makes it. So if the child is breastfeeding, the child's getting the, the nutrients in, the cannabinoids, through the breast milk. So it doesn't seem to be dangerous to put that natural molecule on or in 
the child, depending on whatever you're comfortable with for your child, okay? Whether it's an infant or whether it's some child that's three, six, or nine years old, um, that's really going to be up to the parent to determine. But the answer is overwhelmingly yes, CBD does help with eczema. And we've seen it in a lot of people, and again, it's going to be specific to the condition and specific to that individual's metabolism. Okay, hopefully that answers the question. Did we have another question, Lonnie? Good question. That's a really good question, actually. So we have a question, a follow-up question. Will CBD burn the skin if it's an open wound? Um, I personally have used CBD on open wounds, and it's healed amazingly, but not everyone is comfortable doing that, so we don't recommend it. Um, we even have uh, warnings on the label and warnings on our dose cards. Do not use on an open wound. That's more of a legal disclaimer to be cautious. We always want to be cautious with people. Um, so it's really going to be up to your personal comfort level to determine whether or not you want to use it on scrapes or cuts or burns, but definitely not an open sore. Um, we've had a lot of people come in and say, I burned my finger on the stove the other day and I just figured I was taking the CBD for anxiety. I put it on the burn, thing healed in two days. Pretty amazing. So really I would suggest that it's up to you to determine, but typically we have not seen anyone get a burning sensation from CBD for an already raised or irritated area of skin. For example, hives. You've got a raised red area of the skin where your body is actually giving you a signal that something's wrong. And this is the area that the body decided to manifest this condition. Um, typically, I would personally recommend if you were going to use CBD on a, on a hive kind of a situation, I personally wouldn't use one of our specific topicals with all those ingredients. I would just use an MCT oil or a hemp oil with CBD and put it right on that hive and watch it disappear. That's my personal preference because I've seen it work amazingly well and it tends to be less expensive that way. We're always trying to watch out for the customer's wallet and not have them spend more than they need to with their medication. So hopefully that helps. Any other questions today? Okay, uh, Hannah said she's very proud of you. Hannah <laughs> says hello. Hey, Hannah. And then uh, Maya asked, you. can CBD help diabetes? So, question, can CBD help diabetes? Now, because we have an FDA in America, and we have to be very cautious what we say or what we make claims, we're very concerned about never making any specific claims here. What we typically like to do is we like to share the data that our customers bring back into the store after they take their CBD. They come in and say, this went away, or this got better, or this diminished, and that's typically what we share. Um, yes, we have seen hundreds of people over the last three to four years that we've been dispensing CBD see uh, blood sugar levels diminish or balance. Because again, CBD is a modulator, right? People that have a thyroid don't understand that thyroid is a capacitor. It's opening and closing. It's turning on and off. It's creating different modulatory responses in the body as needed through chemical responses. And therefore, um, if you don't have a thyroid, your body's all out of whack and you have to go to the doctor and get all sorts of pills to bring the body back into balance. One of the greatest utilities of CBD is balance. We put it in the bloodstream at the right dose and then it starts to modulate. It starts to want to balance. Again, we talked about the vagus nerve earlier, which controls a lot of autonomic signals, resting heart rate, respiration, digestion, um, a lot of different things. So therefore, when CBD stimulates these receptors in the body, it's going to want to balance blood sugar levels. We actually have a client that I can speak in detail to. This woman is very heavy. Obviously, she hasn't adjusted her diet very much because she's still quite heavy. And she started on CBD. We started her low. She slowly titrated. Within four weeks, she came back and said, my blood sugar, I've been checking it every morning, has gone down 12% in the last month. That's miraculous and she hadn't even adjusted her diet yet so that's pretty amazing to show that that modulatory response from CBD for blood sugar balance is doing something uh, and we have I would say hundreds of customers that have either type 1 or type 2 diabetes that have seen some adjustment or some balance to their blood sugar one of the cautions we always tell people again we talk about starting low and increasing very slowly just for safety's sake not to overload the receptors and get too much CBD into the body too fast. 
we always want to remind people if you have any negative um, reactions like you get tired or you get dizzy especially for people on blood pressure medications this is something that we talk about a lot in the store if you're on a blood pressure medication or even a diabetic medication that's making adjustments chemically in the body CBD could block what that medication is doing in the body or it could exacerbate it so therefore it is up to you the patient the customer to keep an eye on how your body's feeling and if you have any unwanted signals stop taking the CBD obviously or back off on your dose at least and then um, you know talk to your doctor we have a lot of physicians referring us now we have probably over 40 physicians in Phoenix referring people into the store for CBD but not every physician is open to it at this particular time and I agree with what some physicians are saying which is we don't know enough about it we know a lot about CBD the studies are there but the problem is there's a lot of bad CBD out there there's CBD we tested a bottle of CBD that had um, uh, pregnazone in it and what on earth is that doing in a CBD bottle we've tested CBD that had melatonin in it melatonin's a hormone why on earth would you want to put melatonin in CBD well I want it for sleep we'll have a stream maybe in the next week or two and we'll talk specifically about sleep and how CBD helps with sleep but we're going to talk about what sleep is sleep is a cycle you have to get your body into a cycle so you can sleep properly if you go to sleep one night at midnight and the next night it's four in the morning and the next night it's at ten you're never going to sleep well because you're all over the place sleep is about being consistent with your cycle so that'll be coming up here pretty soon so look for that and thanks so much for watching guys we appreciate it we have another question Lonnie saying okay uh, Claudia wanted Thanks, to Thanks, Maya, know, for that question. We appreciate it. Yep. Uh, Claudia wanted to know if we've seen any benefits uh, from CBD for autism. Autism. So specifically, Claudia just asked a question. Have we seen any specific benefits with CBD for autism? Oh, my God. <laughs> we probably have at least 80 customers that parents that are coming in and utilizing CBD for their children with various forms of autism or Asperger's they're on that spectrum functional um, or having behavioral issues it, it really doesn't matter because CBD is modulating brain chemistry and making changes to neurotransmitters and trying to balance imbalances that may occur in the brain we've seen amazing results from children with autism uh, behaviorally from anxiety to just overall functioning. One of our clients had a child um, that was pretty, uh, I would say, high spectrum autistic, uh, nonverbal. Within six weeks, was becoming verbal. That's pretty amazing. I get a little emotional sometimes because when you think back to the, the, the face of the parent when they just start crying in front of you, it's pretty hard to. It's pretty hard to not just join right in with them. So the answer is absolutely yes. We've seen amazing results for different um, autistic conditions. Um, and so, again, start low. Watch your child's behavior and slowly increase the dose. If the child is on other prescription medications, be cautious because, as I said, CBD may block or exacerbate what those other medications are doing. And if you're seeing any side effects, go to the website of the medication and look to see what the side effects are on that prescription medication. Some people tolerate their medications very well with no side effects. Other people have really bad symptomology with certain prescription meds. So therefore, if a side effect is bloating and you take CBD and the bloating gets worse, obviously CBD is exacerbating what the drug is doing in your body. So obviously stop. If you take CBD and the bloating dim is diminished, that means that CBD is overtaking what the medication is doing. CBD is more, more potent and is helping to bring that person's body back into balance. So ultimately, um, just be cautious. Keep an eye on your body and your symptoms. Again, it's your body. You need to keep an eye on it, or your, in this case, your child's body. So watch them closely. Watch for behavioral changes. Um, but the answer is yes, we've seen enormous results for various children and adults with uh, certain spectrums of autism or Asperger's. One more? Looks like we have another question. That's great, guys. I could sit here all night and answer questions. I love it. Okay. Uh, some, I think it was uh, Kitty Gamer wanted to know what type of uh, CBD you recommend for all-day anxiety. Okay. So Kitty asked a question. 
what type of CBD do we recommend for all day anxiety? So this sounds to me like Kitty doesn't have situational anxiety where she's got to get up and do a presentation and she's panicking. It's just kind of all day, which tells me there's probably some kind of imbalance going on chemically. It could be something she's allergic to and doesn't know it. Um, when I was a bodybuilder, I wrote down everything that I ate for about six, seven months. Um, and then I stopped for a while and then I went back to it a couple years later. I would literally write down everything I put in my body and I would watch how my body responded to that. And then I would make adjustments and watch how my body responded. If you have the discipline to track what you eat, what you're putting in your body and how your body's responding, you'll have an amazing opportunity to find out what your body prefers and what your body doesn't prefer. So for all day anxiety, that sounds to me like there's something systemic going on where we have a, some kind of imbalance, we might be allergic to something, or perhaps we may be exposed to a toxin or something in our environment or our house. It could be as simple as the detergent that you're putting on your clothes that now we put the clothes on our, on our skin. And believe it or not, those chemicals soak into the bloodstream. So there's a lot of things to look for. Uh, but just try to pay attention to process of elimination. I would personally recommend for Kitty that um, I would start with a benign CBD. That means I would stay away from flavors. Don't do anything with flavors. I get kind of crazy when customers come in the store and they're like, I want the peppermint and I want the cinnamon and I want the... Just keep the flavoring out of it. Keep it as simple as possible. That way you don't have to worry about the cinnamon in the CBD, which is an herb reacting with something in your body, right? It makes sense. Too many things mixing in your body creates a potpourri of God knows what. So I would suggest for long-term anxiety that we stick with an MCT oil, okay? Just a specific coconut oil based CBD. Um, start low, maybe a 300 milligram bottle, which is 300 milligrams in the bottle is 10 milligrams per dropper. Start at about between two and five milligrams a day take it in the morning and at lunch and at dinner. For long-term uh, anxiety, we typically recommend people take it at least breakfast and dinner. And that's just easy enough because most people have breakfast and most people have dinner. So you get up in the morning, you get ready for work, you have coffee, juice, toast, whatever, take your CBD and then take it again at night. Get in the habit of taking it 12 hours apart, at least in the morning and at night, again, unless it's for sleep, then you're just taking it before bed, obviously. So twice a day, but for consistent anxiety and kitty, I'd say maybe take a little bit breakfast, a little bit at lunch, a little bit at dinner, so you get a little bit better um, input into the body more consistently. Um, and just, again, every three to five days, slowly increase your dose until you heard today on the stream, Chelsea talk about I was having crazy anxiety and when I got to the right dose, I felt nice and calm throughout the day unless something crazy occurred, which something can happen in anyone's life and create anxiety like a UFO or a car crash happens right in front of you. It's going to kind of freak you out. But to get balanced, that's what I would recommend. At least breakfast and dinner, if not breakfast, lunch and dinner to get it systemically in the, bra in the body at an even dosage. So that's a really good question, Katie. Thanks for sharing that with us. We good? Thanks for joining us, folks. We really appreciate it. We had some good questions today. We look forward to seeing you again at the next CBD live stream. This is John from AZ Holistic signing off. Thank you very much for your time. Mm -hmm.